This video defines the curl of vector fields in three dimensions. I'll start with an intuitive notion of curl. Let's suppose that f represents the velocity of a fluid. Then the curl of f at a point x, y, z represents the net rotation of the fluid around the point x, y, z. Curl is a vector and the direction of the curl vector is the axis of rotation as given by the right hand rule. And the magnitude of the curl can be thought of as the speed of the rotation. This will make more sense as we look at the two examples below. Notice that these two examples are drawn in two dimensions, but to apply the curl to a vector field, we need a vector field in three dimensions. So we're gonna think of these as representing vector fields in three dimensions where every horizontal slice of the vector field looks exactly like this. So here's the equation for the vector field. Notice that z is not written anywhere. So the vector field looks like this when z equals zero. It looks like this when z equals one or z equals two and so on. Notice also so that the z component of the vector field is zero. So the vectors aren't pointing up or down out of their horizontal plane. They just point, in this case, sort of towards the center of their horizontal plane. So to figure out the curl around the origin, I'm gonna think of putting a tiny little ball in my fluid. Now these arrows represent the motion of the fluid. They're pointing in towards the center. So they're pushing on the ball pretty evenly in every direction, which means the ball is not gonna rotate. So in this example, the curl of F at the origin is going to be zero. No net rotation. In the second example, however, if we put a little ball at the origin in this example, the fluid is pushing it in this direction. So if I do my right hand rule and curl my fingers in the direction of rotation, my thumb will point straight up in the direction of the positive z axis. So the curl of f is gonna be some number, I'll just say c times k. Once we have a formula for curl, we'll actually be able to work out what that number c is. But right now we're just giving a qualitative idea of curl. And the qualitative idea is in this example, yes, the ball will rotate. It'll rotate counterclockwise. So the right hand rule says the axis of rotation is in the positive z direction or some positive number times k for the curl. The formula for curl is a little complicated. The easiest way to remember it is using this mnemonic that the curl of F is given by the gradient cross F, where the gradient is this operator that's written in vector notation, d dx, d dy, d dz. So if we take the cross product, we write out d dx, d dy, d dz, and then the components of our vector F, and we work that out as i times d dy r minus d dz q minus j times d dx r minus d dz p plus k times d dx q minus d dy p. I just wrote all, all those symbols formally without worrying too much about the fact that that, that gradient isn't actually a vector and that this doesn't actually really make any sense if you just sort of follow your nose and work it out formally and write down the symbols, you get the definition of curl. I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit by uh, distributing in the negative. So I'm gonna write this as the curl of F is gonna be equal to this expression. Notice that the curl is a vector, not a scalar. Let's use this formula to calculate the curl for the two examples that we saw in the pictures. So we want to take the gradient cross f, and that's going to give us i times d dy of 0 minus d dz of negative y minus j times d dx of 0 minus d dz of negative x plus k times d dx of minus y minus d dy of minus x. 
that simplifies nicely to 0i plus 0j plus 0k. In other words, we have the zero vector. And if you remember, that agreed with our intuition for this example in which the vector field was going into the origin. Let's do another example. For the second example, if we compute the gradient cross f and work out the cross product, we end up with 0i plus 0j plus 4k. So just like we predicted for this vector field that was rotating counterclockwise, the curl or rotation axis should be in the positive k direction. And now we actually have a numerical magnitude for that vector. It has magnitude 4. Notice that in these two examples, the curl didn't actually depend on which point x, y, z we were at. I'll let you think about the intuition behind that. But, and I want to point out that in, in many examples, the curl will depend on which point x, y, z you're measuring it at. In this video, I gave a formula for the curl of a vector field as the gradient crossed with the vector field. And I gave the intuition that this measures the rotation of the fluid flow.